Hello and howdy ladies and gentlemen, Root Beer here and I'm going to be starting another uh, of the University of Waterloo grade 12 scholarship papers, the Euclid papers. Uh, this time as you can see it's going to be the 2019, that's the year of the contest. If you want a copy of, uh, of this contest for yourself, maybe try it out uh, before watching any, any more of these videos, uh, you can get a copy by clicking the very first link in the description. I do recommend you practice uh, this or any other Euclid, especially if you're planning on writing it uh, for real in the upcoming year um, or any time in the future. Uh, give yourself two and a half hours if you want to try it under actual contest conditions. Uh, things to be aware of, there are two kinds of answers, short answers indicated by the light bulb. You just need uh, the, the final, final answer there and it uh, looks like they're always worth three marks. And then the full solution questions uh, indicated by a pen writing on paper. You need to justify everything in order to get all the marks. So there's 10 questions on the contest, and each is worth 10 marks. So there really isn't any sort of bias. You know, if, you, if you've written, say, the Fermat contest from Waterloo, you'll know that later questions, like question 25, are worth more marks than question number one. That is not the case here. So uh, I usually recommend the questions start off easy. So I recommend, you know, one, two, three, go in that natural order. You'll get a lot of marks. And then as we sort of approach questions nine, eight, nine, and 10, these are the ones that get really hard. They require detailed answers and a, a little bit of creativity perhaps, okay? So uh, it, it does get challenging as you go along. We're just gonna look at question number one in this video. Uh, we got two light bulbs, and then we will have to sort of explain ourselves, show our work, and, and things like that. So A part, Joyce has two identical jars. The first jar is three quarters full of water and contains 300 milliliters the, uh, of water. So that's how much water is in there. The second jar is one quarter full of water. How much water in milliliters does the second jar contain? Okay, well... Uh, we could say something like, uh, let J equal the amount, or the volume of each jar. So that's how much water they could contain. Since they're identical, it's the same amount. Okay, so we know 300 milliliters is three quarters of a full jar. If you divide both sides by three, you'll get 100 milliliters is a quarter of a jar. Multiply by four, you can get 400 milliliters is a jar. And then the second jar has one quarter of a jar full. So one quarter of 400 milliliters is going to be 100 milliliters. And that's all we need. We just need the 100 milliliters. The rest of this is just, you know, in case we screw up our calculations, Maybe we'll get part marks. Now you could have sped this up if you knew that we needed just one quarter of a jar and you just divided both sides of, of this expression by three. Which I said verbally but didn't actually write. You would have gotten your answer slightly faster. Okay, but let's get rid of that and we'll go back to what I had originally written. Well, finding out the, the size of each jar. So that's A, we just put 100 milliliters and we move on. B, what integer A satisfies three is less than 24 over A is less than four? Okay, we've got a couple inequalities here. So when you sort of have chained inequalities like this, I find it's easiest to just sort of break them up and solve them individually. Okay, so when I write it like this, I mean, this equation has to, this inequality has to be true for the whole thing to be true but we can just very easily focus on it, okay? Multiply both sides by A, you'll get 3A is less than 24. Divide by three and you'll get A is less than eight, okay? How about over here? If you take the last two in the inequality, you'll get 24 over A has to be less than four. Multiply by A on both sides, divide by four. You'll get A has to be greater than six. Now, if we combine these two again, Six is less than A is less than eight. The only number, the only number that satisfies that is seven. Now you could even grab your calculator and double check this, uh, or you could just put seven in the, the little box provided in the bubble sheet. You get full marks uh, just from having seven written down. Okay. 
C. If 1 over x squared minus 1 over x is equal to 2, determine all possible values of x. Okay. So we've got this nice little expression here, but we do need to show our work. Okay. So um, we want to manipulate this. It, I, I, I don't find reciprocal expressions very easy to work with. So I would probably try and get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides by a common amount. Uh, so I'm going to say multiply by x squared. Everything gets multiplied by x squared, including the 2 on the other side. That's the ironclad rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side, or you don't get to keep your equal sign. All right, so this turns into 1, uh, an x down here, and an x up here cancel. So 1 minus x is 2x squared. I can bring everything over to the other side. Okay, and now I've got a nice little quadratic. I can try and factor this. And if I find that to be particularly difficult, of course, I can also uh, just use the quadratic formula. Okay? But it wasn't so bad. 2x times 1, and then minus x should add up to just the 1x that I'm seeing in the middle there. Okay? So if a product of two things is equal to 0, that can only be true if one of the two things you're multiplying is 0. So either x plus 1 is equal to 0, and then x is minus 1, or 2x minus 1 is 0, and then x will be 1 half. Okay, so those are our final answers, but we did show our work, started with the one equation, explained what we were doing, factored, and, and solved in the end, and that's, uh, I guess, worth four marks there. I, I would say we probably got them all. Okay, so we're off to a great start. That's question number one. In the next video, we're going to look at question two and then to question three and so on. So as I say, if you want to get a copy and try it out, try question two before uh, watching the next video, and I'll see you there.